Hey guys, Jay Massey here. And many times I'm asked questions like, where should your short-term rental be? It's a very common question because you want to make sure you get it right and on the first time because there's only one way to do things, right? You can do it right or do it again. So in this video, we're going to talk about doing it right and getting your short-term rental location perfect from the beginning. Hey guys, Jay Massey here. At the Cashflow Diary, we like to make sure that you can gain the knowledge, information, insight, and skill sets necessary to build your cash flow. You know, the income that comes in from assets without you having to get up to go to work. So if you like information like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you know what? The like button too. When it comes down to understanding everything as it relates to the location of your short-term rental, what I often hear as common is, hey Jay, do I wanna be like right next to the airport. A lot of people want to be next to the airport or they think the airport is the, the right place to go. Here's the number one thing to think about is you want to be near where your customer type is looking to be. Here's what I mean by that. When you travel to anywhere, all of us do that one trip from the airport to say, the hotel or a hotel or to somebody's house, wherever we're going to stay. We all do that trip, but we tend to choose that accommodation to be very near the thing that we want to do. So for example, if you're going to say a popular destination like a Disney World, if you're going to a Disney World or out here in California, a Disneyland, what happens is that you, uh, you want to stay near Disneyland, the thing that you know you're intending to do the most. What you want to do is you want to make that the focus of where you want your short-term rental to be. So for example, if you're looking to serve someone who is on a vacation, then yes, a Disneyland makes 100% sense, but so does a beach area, you know, and that beach area could be a very popular one or a sparsely populated one. It doesn't really matter. And here in Southern California, we have a lot of beaches to choose from, uh, which is part of the challenge, which also means that many locations can and also work. Now, I don't want you thinking that you have to have like a prime location in a vacation spot. Yes, Disneyland and your beaches can be great for a person who's coming on vacation, but there are 65, okay, let's hear that again, 65, 65 different use cases for short-term rentals. For example, many people aren't aware that a short-term rental is needed when a family's house floods. So let me break this down for you. You, when you buy a home or stay somewhere with a renter's policy or what have you, you have an insurance policy. That insurance policy, one of the coverages there, covers a loss of use, meaning if you can't stay there, what ends up happening is that the insurance policy will pay for you to stay somewhere else. This is the key. When your house floods, when your friend's house floods, they need a place to stay and they could stay at your short-term rental and the insurance company is paying. And these stays, if you will, can be 30, 60, 90 days or more. It just depends on what broke inside the house. That's my point. 65 different use cases, but most everybody wants to think about, you know, the Disneyland and the vacations. So you can also, <clears throat> but everybody wants to think about the Disneyland and the vacations. Now, there are some people who travel to shop. In fact, uh, many of our uh, customers from the Middle East will come to a particular area near either Irvine or Costa Mesa, California, and they will shop a lot. I mean, we have some of the higher end brand stores, your Givenchy, your Louis Vuitton, your, uh, your Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, etc., etc., and more. And it's a very convenient place to go to a place like South Coast Plaza. And that could be the reason that they're coming to the area. So again, being geolocated, meaning near the South Coast Plaza could be a good place because they're coming for the quality of shopping. So understanding why your person is coming to the area is, is well, it's paramount to getting this right. Let's also talk about, though, uh, other things like a hospital, if you will. Being near a hospital can also be great. Here's why. 
because when you have outpatient, outpatient keywords, outpatient services, uh, the person wants to recover nearby and they often travel with a person who is there for support. So this could apply to your high level clinicians like your chiropractors. This could also uh, apply to the, the Ronald McDonald houses of the world or your cancer. And it even applies, as, especially in uh, places like California. It, it, it even applies, especially in places like California, when we're talking about cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, etc. So all of those things are 100% here. Another thing that you could look at when it comes to the places where people would want to have their short-term rental is simply being near parks. I know it sounds crazy, but if you're serving families with children, one of our secrets is to find a, a park, a playground, if you will, because if a playground is nearby, mom knows that, hey, I've got a place to take the kids during the day when we're off doing something else. And that happens a lot. Mom and dad are off during the day. Maybe they need a babysitter or something else. But what it comes down to is that they know they have a park they can take the kid to to let off steam. Oftentimes we can forget it's not just about what's inside the unit, your location can matter because it they're using it to live. What is the entire experience of everything? I mean, we're talking your traffic patterns. How many freeways do you have to cross? What's things? Uh, can you walk around inside the neighborhood? There are many things to consider when it comes to this. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, in order to get your location right, you've got to obey the first rule. The first rule is quite simple. It's to know who you want to serve. Who you want to serve trumps everything. Because once you know that person, not just their demographics, but their psychographics as well, you not only know when it, what to put in each unit, you know where each unit needs to be, you know the size of the units, and you can create many five-star experiences almost at will. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I'm looking forward to hearing about your next five-star review based upon the information that you're able to receive. And I'm looking forward to talking to you guys soon. 